Well, hello there, hello there, hello there. My name is HW. Thank you so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. Today, look, I gotta, I gotta respond to a little clip. I put a clip out on the internet a couple days ago. It got me into some trouble. I got some comments on it. Uh, is this guy joking? Is this, uh, is this, um, is he trolling right now? Is this an April Fool's joke? Uh, what's going on? So uh, check it out, check it out. Roll the clip, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to it, and uh, I want to I want to talk about is the tube amp dying? Because I think that's the the real question here. But roll the clip. I will take a digital solution that has some sort of a PA loudspeaker component that I can hear, whether that's a Kemper cab, uh, a Line Six power cab, uh, some sort of a, a, a powered Friedman cab. You know, I've got one of those. Um, a Mission Engineering cab, which is right under here. I'll take any one of those with a digital solution any day of the week over actually owning one of these. These are great for amp collectors. I'm going to be really honest. And this is, this is, this is my opinion. It, this is great for collectors. It's great for dudes on the gear page who right, have like $8,000 less Pauls and played exactly two times in 2021 outside of their bedroom. Because um, that's how many blues jams they got into. No offense. Um, but it's, it's just the Kemper's better. The Kemper's better. The Helix is better. Axe FX is better. Quad Cortex is better. It's all better. It's better because, hands down, you can actually use it. You can actually get distortion out of it. If you own this amp, you're going to have to, in your house, you have it in your house, you're going to set it clean. You're going to put it to two. You're going to set this big 812 monster to two. And then you're going to end up running a, some $3,000 clon through it and pretend that this is like the tone that Jimmy had. You're going to put a fuzz face through it and go, I, I know what it's like to be at Woodstock. You don't. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know because you can't turn it up. You can't turn it up. And you damage your hearing if you do. So why would you All right. So I stand by everything I said in there. And look, I know what you're thinking. I know what people are thinking right now. Oh, this this guy, he just sells things on the internet, man. He's just trying to he's just trying to drum up sales. He just this profile sales must be slow right now. That's why he's making videos. Look, if I can make a video on the internet that would convince people of stuff, like it could change people's opinions. This would be a weird crusade. Like, why would I choose? Like, I mean, amps are cool. But I, I mean, I, you know what I mean? I'd like, maybe I'd do something more impactful, you know, maybe I'd do something uh, more lucrative. But the truth is I'm a lover of tube amps. I own about 50 vintage tube amplifiers. How the heck did that happen? I don't know. I just keep buying them. They're great. They're like art to me. Even if I'm not playing them, I'd like to be surrounded by them. And the truth is I mostly just play a Kemper. Capture them profile them, play a Kemper, you know, got to profile them all, profile the world. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, um, it, it's, a it, it's a great, it's a great, uh, existence, man. But I love them. I love looking at them. I have every offender from, you know, the blackface collection. They're all 64, 65, 66. I got every one, every single one. They're beautiful. They're wonderful. I love them. I love tubes. Why do we love tubes? Because tubes do something, a thing. They do a thing that almost nothing else does. It, they compress and break up in this wonderful way that is chewy and organic and 3D. It's analog. It's rich. It's tasty. It's, it's sexy. It's romantic. It reminds you of all the times in your life, the songs that you heard. It's just that breakup sound. And they do this one thing that I find a lot of digital units lack. I think, I think some of them do a much better job than others. Some of them are completely lacking in this one characteristic. Tube amps, when you have an edge of breakup sound or even a dirty sound, digital things clean up nicely, but um, digital stuff now is great, but it, it, they clean up, they clean up. I have so so many videos on this channel showing you you can clean up the Kemper like so wonderfully. Like even and I even show you how to put compression on between the amp and the cab, which is really where you want the compression to get the touch sensitivity. And the reason some amps clean up more than others are because it is because there's more or less compression that happens in different parts of the circuit. And if that happens, it basically if there's a lot of breakup in the preamp 
and then you have a more compression afterwards, you're going to get more quote unquote touch sensitivity because the compression at later in the circuit is helping leave the output the same. And so you can dig in or play lightly and you get cleaner and dirtier. All amps do it. It's just a question of does the output go way up and down and is it usable? It, it's a quality we have of tube amplifiers, but when you really listen to a tube, the thing it does that is not immediately obvious, but it is the magic of the tube sound. I'll tell you what it is right here. You ready? This is it. It's so simple. It's that when you hit a note, not only does it decay in volume, it, 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 it gets cleaner. Uh, HW, everybody knows that. No, 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 no. Because that's the thing that's missing. And it's the thing that when it's there, people go, oh my gosh. And when it's not there, people go, it just doesn't sound right. Something's wrong with this. You know, it's to make it or break it in the digital world. If you can hit that note and it not only decay, the dirty thing, slight, it's not immediately obvious to the ear what it's hearing. Not everyone identifies it as you hit the note and it's dirty and it also cleans up as it decays. But there's a reason for that. The, the actual intensity of the signal that is being amplified, that is pushing the preamp, that's pushing the front of the amp, is actually spiking and then coming down. So it's natural that it, it would happen. And a lot of times, some digital units, some like I said, some do that better than others, some digital units will just decay in volume. And the ear hears something wrong with that. We know what a tube amp sounds like. We're conditioned to sound like it. Not everyone, though. So is the tube amp dying? Well, let me tell you an experience I've been having. Um, in 2020, I really started, I started doing a bunch of IRs and I had been doing Kemper stuff for years and I started doing some Helix stuff. And, um, you know, I, I got on a couple message boards and I was just, I mean, people just like roasted me, man. They were like, oh, you just digital this, digital that. And I'm like, well, I'm a lover. I have all sorts of guitars. I, I love Fenders and Gibsons and PRSs and I love vintage guitars. I have several of those. I, you know, I, I'm an appreciator of things, you know, they, they, I'm a big uh, Vaughn and Hendrix and, uh, uh, you know, uh, everybody, Gary Moore, um, you, you know, uh, everybody. I love Joey Landreth. Um, I, I'm a fan of great guitar players, man. You know, Paige, I love Zepp. I mean, it's not that I, I'm not disrespectful of the past. I'm not disrespectful of the technology. I'm surrounded by it, literally right now. I'm not, I'm looking... I'm looking at 10 vintage fenders. There's a train wreck over there. This is, there's a, this Marshall, this purple plexi from 67 was in the studio when Appetite for Destruction was being recorded. That is my first vintage amp I ever bought. Not that one. I had to sell it to pay my rent one time. Because, you know, life. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't even sell it to pay my rent. I sold it so I could pay my girlfriend's rent. And uh, that girlfriend's my wife now. And uh, and I drove hours to go find it. And then I sold it. And I don't know whatever happened to that one, but I found this one. And it's the same model and everything. Bandmaster Reverb Amp TFL 5005D. And uh, I remember putting that in my, uh, at the time, it was a 1988 old beat up little Mercedes that a family member had given me. And I remember putting that thing in, in the, uh, and this, and that, th those big fender cabs. And I put that thing in my, uh, I put it in my back seat and I could barely get both doors closed. You know, I've been in this game, you know, don't tell me I'm like, Oh, oh you di these digital guys shut up. You don't even know. You got no idea, man. You got no idea. But the truth is, I started going on there, and I was like, these guys are just not hip to what's going on, man. Digital's getting good, you know? And, uh, you know, it was a bunch of... Look, look, in that clip, what do I say, right? I'm making fun of the gear page guys. I don't know that those guys are around anymore, to be honest. I think that's a little more early aughts gear page, right? And maybe that's like pre-2010 gear page. I, I, so, so my apologies to the gear page for making fun of those people. But um, my point is... My point here is that... 
a real shift has happened because in the past just few years, I completely got off the internet of like message boards and stuff. And I basically just hung out in some Facebook groups with like-minded people, started making some YouTube channels, started making profiles, have gone, been on a mission to profile the whole world, which has been fun. Now um, I got a big Helix release coming out uh, where we're doing everything for the Helix. Um, and uh, uh, you're just doing, I'm, I'm redoing all the IRs. I'm just, I'm completely, completely just expanding into other stuff because I'm just very interested. I'm very interested because I got back on the boards and I couldn't believe. So I started posting and I put, made a video and someone actually came at me with this. They said, yeah, you only play Kemper because the, the message boards tell you Kempers are cool. And I went, what? What? What's that guy talking about? And I, and I started looking around and I realized the world has completely changed in, in, in like the four or five years I got off the message boards and just started doing my own thing. I went back and I realized, oh my gosh, everyone's got a helix. There's more. I kind of knew Kemper was like huge. I knew Kemper was huge because I see how many people buy the Kemper packs and email me and I can tell it's just on a huge upswing and it's been on an upswing. Um, how many people, and that's, that's with, by the way, a bunch of my, my Kemper guys who have gone to quad cortex, you know, like it still is just more and more and more people. Um, the internet's changing, of course, like people are moving to TikTok and everything. Anyway, all that to say the whole world seems like it changed on these message boards. So I'm all of a sudden I'm being, I'm getting people going, no, no, now. Now you're, you're not cool if you, now it's like, you're an idiot for liking the Kemper. And then it's like, you're just trendy. So you like the Kemper. I'm like, I didn't even know this was a trend anyway. So I really start, uh, uh, I've really been, been, uh, you know, just doing my thing. And, 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 and I started thinking about this. What, what, what is pushing this digital wave? What is it? Why are people moving? I said that we all know, well, there's one thing I said that we all know what it, what an old tube amp sounds like. But the truth is the more and more people I've talked to over the last couple of years, especially with platforms like the Helix, if you talk to a person that plays the Helix, I notice, especially Helix LT, because the price points are so low, you realize it's about 50, 50. If you, if that person has ever really owned more than one or two tube amps. It's 50-50 if that person's really owned more than one tube amp. And a lot of times you talk to them and you realize it's, it's maybe a Hot Rod Deluxe. It's maybe just a practice amp. It's maybe like, oh, I had this little one, but I just play the Helix. I've just been playing Helix. I've been, and they're growing up on digital. And, and those guys are in the Helix going, wow, I like this Elephant Man delay. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's like a Deluxe Memory Man. And they're like, oh, yeah, what's that? And they kind of know what analog chorus with modulation is, but they don't, they don't, they never played a tape machine. And then they don't understand that electroharmonics was trying to copy a tape machine with the new technology of the time, which wasn't, which was these analog chips. And so they added chorus and vibrato. They added another effect in there and they added their LPB one to one box to give them an input control. They added some co the chorus control, which was meant to simulate the warble of the tape. And so they're like, oh yeah, it's just to them. It's like, oh, someone just put mod on a delay. They don't know that it's copying a completely, uh, it was replacing. It was, a, it was a more stable, cheaper, easier to make thing that it was replacing. And now that has been replaced with copies of those, all sorts of delays, the, the line six DL four with all these analog delay, uh, models and stuff. And then eventually we're just all the stuff is in one box and they don't, they, they've never played a deluxe Mary man. They've never played a vintage Vox. They've never played a fender. That's why when you go on the internet and you, you, people, they play an amp and they're like, kind of sounds like the best AC 30 you ever heard. Kind of sounds like an AC 30, but like a little tighter on the bottom end. People just say everything sounds like an AC 30. I own an AC 30, nothing. 
Nothing sounds like an AC30. You want to know what even less things sound like? An AC15 sounds very different than an AC30. Much smaller, thinner. AC30s are bright, man. My top boost one is very bright. They're, they're very shallow in the low end. You have all these amps and they're like, it's kind of like an AC30. What they mean is it's not a Fender clone and we use DL84s. That's what they mean. There are AC30 clones. I'm not saying nothing sounds like a vintage AC30, but kind of, kind of. There's some great sounding stuff out there. Um, but I noticed today, even a lot of the gold, the gold standard amps are still matchlesses and, uh, you know, uh, still a lot of Marshalls and stuff. And, and, um, it's not always necessarily even the most vintage thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like, I don't know how many people even know that like the Helix, the detailed Ingrid is a train wreck. Like those guys, they'll never play a train wreck. I've got two JM made train wrecks. People have never played them. They've never played them. They never heard them. They're never, they're not accessible anymore. And honestly, those amps, they're so rare and they're so expensive, but probably they'll start to be forgotten about and their demand will go down because people don't remember them. People never heard of them. People don't, they're, they're, they're going to, this younger generation is just going to go on the Helix. They're going to go on the Kemper. They're going to go on Quad Cortex, on Axe FX. They've never played the real thing. They don't know what even all the models are referencing. How did we get here? I'm trying to talk about, is the tube amp dying? Well, this then brings us back to the point. Why are people going here? One, the price points are much lower. Y you could get right now a Hot Rod Deluxe, you know, or like an AC30 or something, or you could spend just a little bit more and get a Helix, a Helix LT with this full suite of effects. It's everything you need, or you can get the real tube amp. Well, here's the problem. You've got so many kids now playing in churches because church, live music in churches, what's happened to pop music? A lot of pop music has gone a little more, uh, a little less um, your live, you know, alternative rock band on Friday night. So what's happened in, at least in the West, in America, there's been these huge movements of um, lifting the quality of music on Sunday mornings. And because of rising real estate prices, because of music, musical trends, um, I mean, there are cities that had thriving music communities that didn't make it through COVID and they are just... I live in Nashville. It's not one of them. Growing up in San Francisco, I could the music scene was really sort of disjointed and then, you know, there was stuff, there was stuff, man. And we went to a lot of great shows growing up, but you know, we're finding ourselves more and more in these locations where people want silent stages. I got a buddy, some nights he's on the channel. He plays for a really big artist. You've heard of him. Um, uh, you've, you've heard of the artists he plays for. Silent. Digital. They told them, you're going to Axe Effects. I got another buddy. He works at a church. They got multiple campuses. They wanted to go all silent. They buy Kempers for everybody. Everyone plays the Kempers. That's how he got me into the Kemper. I go to my church. I plug in my Kemper. It's silent. Sound guy likes it. It's not loud on the stage. Um, you know, the, ba the, the pianos, the keys are direct. The pianos direct. We spent all this money building this church they did a couple years ago. And we have some of the best acoustic treatment and the room sounds great. And then I go put in my one little 12 inch speaker and blast it right at the middle and take away all the sound guys control over this big system we put in. It's just not practical. Most tube amp designed like that, like in that, in, in the video in the beginning, in the little clip I played for you, I'm referring to a, the fur, a clone, a, a, a remake, a reissue of the very first 100 watt Marshall, eight 12 inch speakers, eight of them blasting forward. Why, who would need that? You know who needed that? People who played, who, who were playing with a drum set and trying to get their sound way out there to the people. But the, who, who are trying to get, have a, it, my point is it's a PA solution, right? And, and you see that back in the 50s and 60s when you look at old Fender amps and what does it say? Instrument channel, mic channel. This was the mechanism to be heard, not necessarily the mechanism to make tone. They weren't always designed to be the best sounding. They weren't always designed, this is how I want the guitar to sound. Sometimes it was about 
How much volume and clean headroom can I get so I can put my 410 Bassman amp, which was meant to, so I could amplify my bass guitar next to my drums. We have inherited a lot of these shapes and designs, these boxes with speakers pointed at the front that push sound out one way. We have adopted this idea that this is what an amplifier must be. And we then, in applying it as technology moves on, we figured out all these great things. Well, here's, well, hey, Nobody sold more Gibson Les Pauls and Marshall Heads than Jimmy Page when he used a Telecaster and a Fender Deluxe, right? That's the joke about Zep 1. We figured out that you could mic these little amps and they would sound big. They also, they, the low end would be carved out around where you wanted the bass player. We figured out um, how to make these things sound incredible. We figured out how to EQ things. Uh, as sound on sound recording came up and as, as recording, the, the recording industry, the music recording industry became a big thing. The biggest thing, I mean, one of the biggest medias in society, but where we end up is with these antiquated designs that you would never arrive at today. You would never say, I have this six string instrument and I want to play and sing to people. Where do you want to, where are these people? Sometimes they're on the internet. Sometimes they're live. Sometimes they're, I'm doing it over the television. Sometimes I'm just doing it for fun in my house. An engineer would approach those and go, those are five different use cases. Let me make something that solves for all five of those. Whereas the tube amp literally solves for one. The tube amp is designed for you to be heard out there. They then change, I mean, that was the original design of the tube amp. They then, I mean, they made small amps, which were quote-unquote practice amps, which literally, this was for practice, not for gigging. It's not big enough for gigging. Why? Because the gig is loud. The gig has to throw the sound in front of you. I've made my point. We wouldn't arrive at these designs today. They're wonderful designs. I, I'm in love with them. I'm more passionate about tube amps than you, okay? So just... If you're like, if you're like, oh, this guy's an idiot, he doesn't understand anything. Listen, I love it more than you, okay? And maybe if you love it more than me, well, then I'm impressed. Um, <laughs> the, the pain point for the tube amp is this. Today, if you tell a young guitar player, hey, you can play on Friday night, you can play at church, you can play, um, and, and for those of you who aren't church players, look, I'm telling you that's where, I'm telling you, look at the advertising of a lot of these companies, that's where so much of the gear is going, that's where a lot of the money is. You know why? The struggling musician on a Friday night has been playing the same Hot Rod Deluxe that he's been playing for the last three, four, five, six, seven years, and it still works, and he's maybe going to have a hit song. But every lawyer, doctor, all the blues lawyers and doctors who used to buy the $8,000 Les Pauls and play at the blues jams, they're, they're Sunday morning guitar players now. That's what they do. They sell real estate. They write insurance. They uh, whatever. They're, they're PAs and nurses. Uh, they're tradesmen. They lay tile. They do all this stuff. And they save up their money. And you know what they do? They go buy a $3,000 Veritas. They're not into Fender, so they buy a Sur. Uh, they love the new PRS. They have the new matchless amp. They have the Strifecta stuff. This is My point is, this is where gear has gone. And... You now have these people in multiple use cases. Everyone wants to be able to produce their stuff easily for Instagram. So More people want to be able to play guitar on Instagram than play guitar live. More guitar playing is being consumed on this device than is being consumed at a bar. It is so apparently obvious that the reason the tube amp will die is that it cannot keep up with the solutions that are required for the use cases moving forward. If you are not a unit that has some sort of silent out so I can record direct to my computer, so I can do it late at night in my house and I don't have to do a whole mic setup, I can actually hear what I'm playing and how it's gonna sound when I'm recording my Instagram or TikTok video, 
People aren't going to want it. Now, is the tube amp going to go away? No. They're, they're beautiful. I, people like me are still going to buy them. People like you are still going to buy them because all these guys I know have digital stuff. They always buy a tube amp for the house and they put it on too and they enjoy it. And every now and then their wife leaves or their whatever, their mom leaves and they, they turn it up and they let it rip. And there you go. And then their neighbor's like, oh, God bless that kid. I remember doing that too. And then, and then you know, that's it. That's it. Then they go play Halo. They go play uh, Modern Warfare. They go play Fortnite. I don't know what they do. They go on TikTok. It's a it's an experience, but it's become a novelty. I say that to you in Nashville, where there are amps everywhere. These guys, there are people who would say you're an absolute idiot. What the f are you talking about? I take my tube amp. I've been taking it out. I play every day. I met, raised four kids, making a living, playing for this guy and that guy. But you don't know every time I'm a working musician. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But what I'm saying is. Do some of these new modern tube amps have uh, outs? It, does the new Rev head solve for this problem? Yes. Does the PT20 little guy solve for this problem? Yes. Are there? Does the Victory pedal board amp solve for these problems? Yes. Are tubes gone? They're never. They're never going to be gone. They're never going to die. But Guitar Center with rooms full of guitars and amps in there. If, if you said to me right now, uh, I got 500 bucks and I need an amp, I'd be like, get an HX Stomp. Get a Boss. No, I don't know. I'd probably say try to get a Helix. I wouldn't say get a Hot Rod Deluxe. Because if that's what you got, like, what are you going to do for effects? Are you going to keep buying effects? I mean, look, a Hot Rod Deluxe is a great amp. I have one over there. I'm going to sell it. I don't have any use for it. They're nice. They, they solve, they're super killer utility amps. They sound great. There's just no chance today that if someone asked me for advice, I would say, okay, okay, you're playing the guitar. You, are you going on a nationwide tour? No. Hmm. Who would have thought you just started playing the guitar? Um, have you, do you want to record? Maybe. Yeah. I'd like to record. I, I make my studio in my house and uh, cool. Cool. Well, you could just plug this cable into an interface on your computer with this, and you'd, you'd be able to record. You'd be able to do tracks for people. You'd be able to do whatever. With the Hot Rod Deluxe, you're going to need to learn about miking. You're going to need to learn about, like, like you're going to need to isolate it somewhere. You're going to need to kind of know something about miking the guitar amp. You might need a couple, like a preamp or something. Then you'd go in there, and then maybe you'd want to EQ it. I don't know. I mean... Yeah, how? Yeah, you're gonna listen back. You'll need some studio monitors, maybe to listen back. But it starts to be like, okay, okay, well, maybe I don't want that. Yeah, maybe that's a little involved. When this unit right here lets you record direct, so that you can record directly into into your computer and make a make an Instagram video with direct sound rather than the mic on your phone. You can do it with the mic on your phone. Nothing against that. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what though. Um, you know what happened. I used to be at a church in San Francisco and we played there and we had our amps on stage and I loved it. I moved to Nashville. I went to the Kemper, started doing silent stage. Everybody does silent, a lot of silent stage stuff out here, at least in the church, in the churches and stuff. A lot, a lot of big, big name players. Like I said, tons of big name guys do silent stage. And if they don't do silent stage, they're sending their sound direct. That's really what I mean. They're sending their sound direct. And then, and then, cause it's so, it's so easy for digital to have a speaker on stage. That's simple. Anybody can get a powered speaker and put it on stage and listen, right? Um, that's not even a, an issue. But those guys back in San Francisco, they were, uh, it was 2020 and all of a sudden they couldn't meet anymore. And they started producing one of the best, like meant for home, you know, experiences that anyone was producing where they had everyone play the instruments of their house. And then they had this great editing of all five people coming in and out shots were moving and all this stuff. It was way better than just setting up a camera and going on the stage at your church and like promoting it to everybody. Right. It was like, Oh, uh, Hey, no one can be here. So we set up a camcorder. So now you can watch us do church here without you being there. Because again, if you were thinking, how do I make something people want to enjoy at their house? You'd never be like, we need a big room that kind of looks like a theater and a stage with these lights. You'd never, you'd never arrive at that. You'd do this. And man, the, they had everybody with these smooth transitions. And all of a sudden, the acoustic guitar players 
the electric guitar players, the singers, everyone had to have the equipment to do it from their house. And the guitar players had to be like, okay, how am I going to mic my amp? I guess I can mic it. What mic should I use? Well, they just all went digital immediately. And then when it was time to go back out, it was like, I can just use these sounds I've been using on this digital thing and put it out, out there. So why wouldn't I do that? The tube amp's going to live where it lives for me, for the aficionado, for the player, for the player to enjoy. There's going to be gigs and there's going to, there's always going to be a vibe of like, we're a rock band and wherever rock bands go, there's going to be amps. The amp is quintessential, a quintessential part of rock and roll, but it's not practical. Good. Rock and roll is not practical. It shouldn't be. Rock and roll is about giving the finger to your boss and uh, punching the kid you don't like at, in, from the from the high school, the one who bullied you, and uh, you know, saying we're gonna do it our way. You know, that's rock and roll, man. That's rock and roll. It's that's that's it. It's not about the purest tone that you one could get from the crystal lattice. That's not rock and roll. It's not rock and roll. You know what is rock and roll? The kid in his bedroom playing on a Helix who's just going crazy and he's on his laptop and he's like recording a great tune and he's going to break out. That's rock and roll. Is the tube amp dying? The tube amp, it ain't even dying, man. It is ascending to the afterlife. It is rising up. It is like Obi-Wan Kenobi. You strike down the tube amp and it is going to become more powerful than you could ever imagine. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to hit that thing and it's just a cloak falling down. It's just a cloak falling straight down. Obi-Wan, I'm going to go up here to the Chosen One later. See you later, Darth Vader. I'm out of here. You'll be sorry about this. And then that's it, man. That is it. That's it. The tube amp ascends. It's like Jesus going up to heaven. It's just like, see you later. You coming back? Yeah? Love ya. I mean, you still get to play your tube. Look, I don't know where I was going with that, I'll be honest. But the point is, no one should be upset that the tube amp is dying because music is changing. The world is changing. The tube amp's always going to be in it and it's always going to be a beautiful part of it, you know? And it's kind of like, I don't know. It's like a fine liqueur, you know? And there was one point in time where like, like water was contaminated. So like beer was the cleanest thing to drink. So everyone in the middle ages just drank a bunch of beer because it was like, you knew it was fermented and it was clean because you knew the bacteria in it wouldn't kill you rather than just like, Oh, I found this water on the ground. Is that going to kill me? So, and that goes back, man. The earliest bread recipes call for yeast in the form of beer. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That's the tube amp. Now, you know, it's like micro brews and this and that. No one's, no one, no one's pounding cold ones for sustenance here. You know what I'm saying? So we're not going to be turning up the tube amps because it's our only solution. So in that way, it's over. But in the sense that tube amps belong to the lovers of tone, they belong to the players. They belong, it's the experience They've never been more alive. They've never been more part of the music. I'm HW. Thanks so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. HW out.